Oh my God, Max for Life is gonna blow your mind. This is Stephen Ness, Ness, uh, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about uh, my new toy that's so cool. So Ableton Live is a fantastic digital audio workstation. You can do tons of cool production stuff with it, lots of things. The new version Live 8 came out pretty recently. It's got so much power. Um, but it uh, is a little bit lacking in terms of like the real like nitty gritty flexibility in building your own plugins, and that's where Max for Live comes in. Max MSP is a graphical programming language. You can do anything in it, and it's really natural to musicians because it's like you plug in one thing into another. So you're plugging your guitar into your amp, you plug in one object to another. So it's really awesome. So I have this little um, patch here for te uh, Terry Riley's In C. And um, I just have this all set up in Max, and the kind of instructions are that you have these 53 different patterns, and each person is supposed to play their own pattern for a while, and then go on to the next one, and just kind of stay within a few patterns of each other. So I already had a pretty nice implementation of this, just using follow actions in Ableton. So in Ableton, you have these awesome follow actions where you can say when you want to follow it and what you want to do when you follow it. Do you want to go to the next one? Do you want to stay on the same patch? But I didn't really have all the control that I wanted, so that's where Max for Live comes in. So over here, we have this control object, and if I just start off, um, start this up, uh, start the whole patch going, then every um, hundred ticks or so, it's going to um, randomly advance a track. So there it advanced track 0, so it starts 0, 1, 2. And then when this little bang flashes, it'll advance it again. So we can just manually do that click on there and it'll advance one of the tracks. We can also have little buttons here for doing 0, 1, or 2. So to see all the goodness that's happening on in the inside of this, you just click on this little button here. Then we get our Max for Live window that comes up. We can do everything in this window that we did in the other one as well. So I can click on this and it'll toggle that on or off. Advance randomly. And advance each track individually. So the random number gave us a bunch of twos there in a, in a row. So now if we want to look what's actually going on behind it, that's where the real exciting stuff goes on. So let's just pause this and just take a peek over here. This is where the real action is happening. Uh, and this is where we're actually advancing the tracks. And um, up here, though, we'll just start up here just quickly. This whole thing is just generating a random number for us. Um, between uh, 0, 1, or 2. So it's generating 0, 1, or 2, and that's this random here. All this up here is just do doing like a metronome, so it's like um, giving us ticks. And to do that, we're using this live observer object. And from the live observer, what do we want to observe? We want to observe the current song time. So every so often, it'll give us um, uh, the current song time. And what I'm doing here is I'm running a counter from 0 to 19, so counter 20. Every time that that's hit 0, then I'm going to send a bang out through this that's going to generate a new random number. And I have this little object here where I can turn that switch on and off. So if we go back to the presentation mode, follow that guy up, that's this one where we're turning that on and off. So now we follow that number three down here, and we have our trigger. So we have three ints that that one int is going to trigger three events. First one is going to go over here, and that's going to just set up the clip slot um, that we want to advance. So we'll go to the live set track, and then clip slots, um, um, whatever. And we're going to be getting that from over here. That's going to go all the way down here, and it's going to fire this live object. So this set tracks here is number two, so it's from this pack, it's the number two, so it's this one from here, so it's zero, one, or two, whichever track we're interested in. So that's all set up over here. But to advance it, we need to figure out which slot is actually playing, and we want to add one to it. So to do that, we go to the live set tracks, and we get the track that we're interested in, zero, one, or two, get the path for that, and feed into this live object then that live object we want to use the get method on it and get the currently playing slot index so you can see max for live it's all really straightforward and the neat thing is you can get any user interface thing here and get information from it or set it using um, live um, max for live which is just so cool so we send that get 
playing slot index, send that message to live object, that'll tell us which slot is playing. Uh, we get a string and an integer, and that string is just the name of the, the object, and the integer is what we're interested in. So we add one to the integer and feed it in over here. We've already set up this pack with that one variable, and as soon as this goes through it, then it's going to ex execute this whole whole um, path down here. So we'll go to the live set tracks and go to the clip slots, and that's one more than the one that we were just um, currently playing get the live path from that, call fire and call on the live object. So that's um, what's going on over here and you can see the little clips going forward in time. You can advance them manually and that manually is going to send that same integer over here. So this is just the start of this patch. I want to have uh, add some cool new goodness so that it keeps things within a couple beats of each other and I'll do another screencast about that. So thanks a lot. This is Stephen Ness, SNES at SNES at SNES.net and just uh, send me an email if you have any ideas or questions and Max Your Live rocks.